Hello YouTube, this is Asatsu5 and this is a video response to Kelly Level's question, what is your favorite um, blade shape? And um, I know video responses are not really a thing anymore, but uh, I thought instead of leaving a comment and typing it out, typing out a whole book, that I'll make a video. And um, basically this is going to come down to two different categories. My ideal self-defense knife or fighting knife and my ideal EDC a utility knife blade shape. Uh, so, first off, I'm a Bowie guy. I have an affinity for Bowies. I'm from Texas. Uh, I've been to the Alamo several times. Been to Arkansas several times. Um, been I've seen the Bowie knife exhibit. I love Bowies. Um, and um, it's also important to note that the clip does not define the Bowie. Uh, you can have buoys without clip points, but I like the clip point buoy. But there's a particular style of clip point that I like, and that's the elongated, thin clip. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. This is the Ontario Bagwell, uh, probably my favorite fighting buoy that I own as of right now. Um, or actually, it's my favorite traditional fighting buoy right now. I got a I got a new buoy that I'm going to show you, but um, this has a very long and elongated thin clip, it tapers, um, it has some distal taper, and it tapers this way as well. And uh, the reason why I like this is because this has great penetrating power, deep penetration. Um, a couple of people did tests, and I'm still trying to figure out a way I can make, do the same test and make it fun for video, but um, generally these long clips uh, outstab and out penetrate uh, spear point uh, daggers uh, because they have a lot less material in this area right here. You have a little bit of belly right here, and then on this side, or you have belly right here, and then on this side, uh, there's almost no blade material. I mean, it just kind of drops off. So these penetrate a heck of a lot better than uh, most daggers. Whether it be a stiletto or a rondel or, or the Bokel um, Applegate dagger, this can out penetrate it. And you also have good chopping capability, good slashing capability, um, depending on your fighting style. The Bowie is the knife that can do it all, if it's made correctly. Now I'm going to show you my newest Bowie, and some of you may say, that's not a Bowie, that's a fighter. Well, in essence, Fighters are buoys. Buoys are fighters. Bo fighters are buoys. Um, you know, um, if th what defines a buoy is it its blade shape, it's its intention. And buoy knives were never really intended to be a um, hunting or camping knife. It was a weapon. And this is my new buoy. Very much a buoy. Um, and. Um, some people call this a fighter, and then uh, some, and I guess I'll get into this conversation a little bit later, but this is a buoy. But instead of the false edge stopping right here, the false edge goes all the way back. I think it's noted, should be noted that I like a false edge on my um, buoy. Uh, a false edge differs from a swedge, because a swedge does not have the ability to cut, but false edges do cut. This has an actual edge on it. This has an edge all the way on the back. Um, a lot of people don't know the difference between a swedge and a false edge. Um, this is a false edge. This is a false edge. And in in gen in essence, a false edge is just the top edge that's facing up or facing towards you, depending how you're holding it. If you're holding it like this, the false edge is facing you. If you're holding it like this, the false edge is facing up. And that's all, that's all what a false edge means is the top edge. If I get this knife and hold it upside down, the primary edge now becomes my false edge. But, um, yes, I'm really looking forward to having a battle of the buoys with this. And I want to show you a buoy knife that um, kind of differs from that um, uh, train of thought. And that is the K-Bar. The K-Bar is essentially a buoy, but as you can see, it doesn't have an elongated thin clip. It's, pre it's pretty broad in this dimension and is really complete opposite of the Bagwell. 
And a lot of people will say, well, this is a combat utility and this is a fighter. And the difference between a combat utility and a fighter, a combat utility knife has no false edge. It's a swedge. And swedges don't cut. And I'm not really intending to flip you off. Um, there you go. That's, is that better? But it does not cut. So a combat utility knife does not have a false edge. Buoys and uh, fighters do have a... Uh, oh, uh, combat utilities have swedges. Buoys and uh, uh, fighters have uh, false edges. I hope I said that right. I'm getting confused. Um, but yeah, so this isn't going to penetrate as well. It will still penetrate, but it's just not going to penetrate as well as the Bagwell or the OSS. Um, honorable mention. For self-defense or fighting knife, I'm talking fixed blades here. Um, what would I choose if I couldn't choose a buoy? Well, that's simple. That would be a Tanto, but not... An Americanized Tanto, and there's nothing wrong with Americanized Tantos. They they do their job, and they're pretty cool as a, kind of a utility tactical knife, uh, tactical EDC, if you will. I'm talking about traditional Tantos, and as you can see, um, they kind of have the same thing going here as far as penetration is concerned. Deep penetration, good slashing capabilities. Um, I'm not opposed to carrying the Hisatsu, but if I was going to carry a traditional Tanto, it would probably be the Hisho. I do know how I can c carry that concealed. But yes, this is an honorable mention. Good penetration, good slashing capability. Concealable. It is the Japanese buoy, in essence. Um, <laughs> but now let's talk about um, EDC knives. I really like good tip control. So um, I'm going to like... Um, Leaf shaped blades. There was one. Uh, I lost my blue full flat ground Endura and I'm crushed. I know where I lost it. I know what city it's in, but uh, I can't go back and get it because someone else picked it up. But uh, I like leaf, sh leaf shaped blades. I like good uh, tip control because usually when I'm uh, opening up a package or opening up a box, you're cutting with this portion of the blade, maybe that much of the blade. And, you know, uh, if you have a heavy-bellied knife, you kind of have to hold it like this to open it. Also, I don't think I have anything here that I can... Oh, here we go. Uh, uh, if I'm opening up a bag or uh, an envelope, I just do that, and it, it flies open. You just pop it open with the tip. It's really easy. Um, let's see. I'm going to try to demonstrate that with the... Um, K-Bar. Does it work? See? Only two cuts from the um, leaf-shaped blade and no uh, no um, cuts from the K-Bar. By the way, this is the K-Bar that made me famous. Or oh, my brother famous. My channel famous. Him in, in particular famous. But uh, So yeah, I like good tip control. Uh, it just uh, pops things open. And if you have a leaf shaped blade as opposed to a Warncliffe blade you can put uh, the belly on a cutting board or a plate and you can use it to cut up your food. Uh, Warncliffe's if you uh, try to use them on a, um, a cutting board or on a plate you're really only using the tip which as you can see will uh, pop things open but uh, you don't want to just grind away on your tip uh, on a ceramic plate or cutting a board. So uh, to me, a leaf shaped blade for EDC is more practical. If I need a steak knife, it can work as a steak knife. If I need to open up stuff, it can open up stuff. And not only is it good for opening up uh, boxes and bags, it's also good for opening up people. Uh, so it cuts with a lot of pressure behind it. And that's it. I hope y'all have a great day. I'm Satsu5 and I'm out.